बनना चाहते थे अनधन्यवाद थे टुडेज ब्लॉग वीडियो इज अबाउट द फर्स्ट द टॉपिक व्हिच इज वेरी नियर डियर माय हार्ट माय पेरेंट्स सेपरेटेड व्हेन आई वाज एंड वर्स सेपरेटेड व्हेन आई वाज 1617 एंड इट वाज अ वेरी वेरी आई से लेफ्ट हाइम फॉर मी बिकॉज़ I really didn't know what was going on emotions wise and I just found out a couple of years ago before I had autism and I was in a new class and so a lot of stuff was going on during my parents the what from stuff with my brother and just it was a very crazy chaotic time and as you know we've been talking about transitions and the voice is a very tough one because I felt I'm going to use a lot of I feel to what I think happened because this is about me. I felt like everybody had just abandoned me in my own livelihood. That everything was just happening way too quickly for me not to be able to solve everything, fix everything, make it all go away. And it was just happening way quickly. And it and I just like felt like it was like rapid speed like oh my god, oh my god. You know, and there was a lot of my Life, well, I thought I, I should blame myself for it. Like it was my fault I did the divorce. That is my fault. This all happened because I had autism. Today I don't feel that way, but back then that was very, very true in my life. And for many years, I had a very big distrust for my dad. It's very true today, but as I've grown in, that is not really, really about him. It's about my feelings and me and this divorce and how I didn't trust people in the divorce because I couldn't talk about it. I put I put a lot of pressure on myself as a young kid at that time to understand, to feel, to protect my parents and to protect everybody from being hurt and not being injured and whatever. And that's a lot for a person of my age to do all that. Make everybody feel happy, protected. And I felt like I always had to be the one to go in the middle and fix everything and make everybody stop the constant, constant bickering with each other about everything. That was the hardest thing was having my parents just bicker about every single thing, you know. And they tried to shield us, but you know, I mean, it was the toughest part was the part of going back and forth, back and forth. Like I didn't know what day or what day it was. Sometimes because I was at you know, my dad's house, my mom's house, and our lives were so different. Cause we saw different people, we saw different things, and we go to school. And the school was for me was the only time I was actually maybe sane because I, would, I saw the same people and went to the same school, took the same bus, and some variations. And then I took the bus to my dad's house. And then my dad picked me up. Come on, like that. But we ended up at my dad's house all the time, and it was not. Easy. I mean, I one time saw the divorce papers. I mean, I won't go into great details what happened, but I was there. My mom, my 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 brother told us how he knew what happened, with, with everything and the affair, and that was not easy. That hurt. And everything I believed in my life wasn't true anymore. And it should have just shattered my life for a long time, and it just blew my mind that here I was, a 16-year-old kid, 17-year-old kid, just living his life normally, and then one day, boom, separate lives. I mean, luckily I got to see both my grandparents because they were so close to each other, but separate lives. My dad wasn't going to be part of a lot of that stuff in the summer anymore. I could see him when I saw him, and you know, he was down to see my mom, but. Today I still have it. Still have a life, you know, and you know, it's not easy because I can't talk to my dad about a lot of the stuff I want to talk to him about and ask him questions because he's just not there yet. That's just my dad, though. I love him anyway, you know. And I'm slowly working on relationships with him. That's actually going to be a real relationship. That's one thing I suggest to a lot of people. Just look at the relationships you have. Not just in this hobby, the, the social cues and the emotions and the relationship. I put myself in the middle of a lot of stuff, and then made myself be the person to deal with all that stuff. I put myself in the middle of a lot of crazy shit that I wasn't ready to put myself in the middle of. I thought I was. Oh, I know that this is fine. I can be the big boy. And I see today that 
that wasn't healthy for me to be such involved in chaos. I don't like chaos. It just felt like it was all like a really bad feeling happening. And, you know, today I got my, my stepmom a lot. And still it just feels like I don't really know my place in that relationship with my dad and my stepmom. I feel like the outsider looking in going, mm, okay. I'm really slowly learning to not do that anymore. I'm a, I'm, I live so far away from them that I not, don't see them every day. But that's tough. Because I've been living in a fantasy relationship with the divorce. Like, this is my fantasy world about the divorce. And as my family and I begin to heal, a part of what, what I'm doing is starting to help them heal. Because I want to talk about it. I really want to open up about the divorce and the feelings about it. It's given me the peace of mind to look at my life and go, wow, that was scary. <laughs> and to go, I don't know, I mean, that feeling of abandonment is a big one for me. Because it wasn't true. I mean, people loved me. I just felt abandoned. I thought, okay, screw you all. I'm just going to go do what I'm going to do now and enjoy life. And I did for a long time. I found some, you know, some really crazy stuff and and it was, you know, a long time coming that I when I got clean and got sober and lived my life a different way. The divorce meant something. It meant, you know, my parents weren't happy with each other for a long time. You know, my dad wasn't happy with my mom and I think it's very different. They seem to have a very different life. My mom has sort of gotten over it. And yet, for me, the divorce represents something very powerful in me. The transition, it was change that was really hard for me. Because I wanted, and third of they call it a nuclear family, a perfect family. I wanted everything to work. And yet I shut down. A feelings and emotional wise, I shut down. It got to the point where like, okay, people want me to talk about it, but they don't want me to talk about it. And they don't want me to blame people. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And I heard all that. Like, don't talk about it, don't talk about it, don't talk about it. You know, you don't have to feel and don't get mad about it, but just, you know. I probably had to play any other person and that's, you know. And that was not easy. Because I had been taught and conditioned in my life that you either blame the other person, use sarcasm, or, and it was not easy to really look at myself in this divorce and what, you know, I didn't do anything. I was a kid. But I felt like I did a lot. I felt like I affected this divorce. Like I caused a lot of that crap to happen. It happened. But I didn't. You know, just, just crazy screwed up world we live in. And, to totally heal from this is going to take a long time. But it's the letting go that's tough. Like I said last time video, the voice is not easy. You know, for me, I have multiple families now because my mom dating somebody, and that's not easy. It's like a whole new, you know, what what is he to me? And you know, and I have a dad, and it's just, it, I can't even answer those questions sometimes. You know, all these multiple families, and it just confuses me. Who, you know, what, how do I fit, you know, because, because my, my, my stepmom was a friend of my dad for a long time, and, you know, a friend of the family, and all the other stuff, and it's just complicated sometimes. And yet, talking to my family about it has been helpful. Like, my older brother, I haven't talked to my sister about it yet, but talking to my family about it has been really helpful because... It, it caused a lot of tension between me and my brothers that I never knew was there. That I just shut down and didn't trust because I thought he was the enemy and he's not. He's my little brother. I love him. And yet, the divorce really, I think, today has let me love people a lot more. I have compassion 
for the whole entire situation I've never thought I'd ever see before. Compassion for my dad, compassion for my mom, compassion for my brothers and sisters because we were all hurting in it. It's, pain, it's very painful. The voice is very painful. Because sometimes you have a lot that you think about and a lot that you feel that, that bubble of, oh my god, it's my fault. I caused something to happen. And when, when they love each other, why are they talking? I mean, my parents didn't talk for a long time right after that. You know, they had to let the lawyers talk. And that was scary because, like, I don't know. You know, I didn't feel like I could go to anybody. And one thing I'll say, find somebody to go to. Just talk to that person. I don't care who it is, just find somebody. I had a lot of teachers I talked to and I was helpful, but, you know, and even in college I shut down a little bit. Like, when everything settled down, my, my grandfather died and then, you know, somebody else died and it's just, you know, my brother, stuff for my brother, some issues with my twin brother and it's just, all that stuff just built up in me and it's just like, how do I cope? How do I deal with all this stuff? How do I... You know, I just started questioning life and about marriage. I mean, I question marriage today, too. I question marriage, question, you know, what am I supposed to do? I mean, I felt like my parents just didn't have time for me. And a big part of that is probably true, but, you know, couldn't take care of me the way they needed to take care of me. And that's just the tools they had. And that's hard for me to see the honesty. And yet, the hope and the positivity about all this is that I have a family today. I have a lot of brothers and sisters and stepbrothers and boyfriend and family I haven't met yet. And yet, somehow, I've made it through. The pain wasn't as bad as it was two weeks ago. And, you know, I still have questions. I still wonder to this day, I still need hugs every once in a while. I still need to let it go and beat boxes and whatever I gotta do to let it go and talk about it. Cause it hurt a lot. It was like this big, big shiny armor thing of like, ah. <laughs> and it still hurts today. And it's like, and it's like, I, but I also gotta move about, I gotta move on on it, move forward. We're gonna try to change that relationship. That was the path. And try to change the relationship toward the future of hearing for this stuff. And know that I gotta meet my family where they're at. I gotta meet my dad where he's at. And just love him for what he is. And know that this divorce is not his fault or my fault or anybody's fault, it just happened. And I need to look at myself and go, what am I feeling? How do I feel about this? How do I deal with this issue? How do I focus? It? But it's awesome, not that easy, but I'm working on it. I'm working on how to really dig deep and find the inner meaning of what this is all about and how I can heal from it. And even if I knew the truth, I don't think it would help. I think just finding peace with it that's the best thing I can give. And you know, that's the end of the story really. Finding peace with this divorce. That's the advice I can give today. Just find peace with it. In your own life. What is a divorce from family or a divorce from life or divorcing from negative thought? Let it go. Move forward. I mean, I need to talk to my family and my family. I need to talk to a lot of people about what I felt and just move forward and keep on that light, the road to shining. And thank you again. And thank you all for listening. And it's been fun talking to you about divorce. And you know, it's been a, 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 a journey. <laughs> and you know, it was quite a roller coaster going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and everything. And, Whatever. But I know that there's, there's a difference in my life today. I feel freer than I ever thought about this issue. And the pain comes and goes. But I know that I don't have to, I don't have to go back to that place again. And that's really cool for me. 
And I phrased that feeling bang. I phrased that feeling alone. I phrased the feeling, oh my God, what did I do now? What did I say? I gotta say the right thing. I gotta do that. I don't have to live that way anymore. I can be the true me. And that's really cool about this. Because I divorced myself from all of that in a way that's very different. And today I can look at it and go, okay, that's the old way. The new way is to try to get me to heal from this, from my family and everything else. It's tough. I've been down that road. If you need help or anything, just give me, you know. I'm on Facebook. My email is Benjamin Robinson at PositiveLiving.com. You know, the blog at PositiveLiving.com. Just email me, find me, Facebook me, whatever. We'll do this together, folks. Thank you and good night.